live stream again. Uh, this session, for this session, I have uh, Roberto Blanco Trillo, my colleague who joins us today from Germany. Hi, Roberto. Good afternoon. Hello, Daria. Hi, Roberto uh, is going uh, to talk about um, sustainable solutions for automotive OEM. Everyone uh, is invited to ask uh, the questions in the Q&A chat that is there on the right hand side of your screen. With saying that, I would like to pass the word to Roberto and everyone enjoy the presentation. So hello, thank you everybody for joining in and thanks to you Daria for the nice introduction. So um, yeah, so um, I'm Roberto Blanco Trillo as uh, Daria already said. So I'm here uh, at Onyx responsible for the global business development and uh, therefore the focus of our of my talk, talk today is uh, the, the tire and rubber business uh, and uh, our efforts in this uh, part of the application. <clears throat> As you may are aware, so uh, Allnex uh, has set uh, global pillars uh, uh, in line with um, our customers. Um, the UN has set uh, um, sustainable goals out of them, which are in total 17. So, and we picked uh, the the, the most relevant for us, we, what we have the most impact in, as I already said, so uh, together with our customers via a personal conversation and as in questionnaires. And here on the right side, uh, I want to highlight, uh, highlight which is, are the goals we are focusing on. So that's the circle, uh, circular economy, um, the re renewable uh, sourcing of um, raw materials, uh, the energy efficiency of uh, in general, so for, for the process and for the final product, the, the general use of safer materials and the emission reduction. Yeah. Uh, emissions reduction means uh, predominantly uh, CO2, of course, uh, and uh, which impacts uh, as well on the one side uh, our production, so our own effort in our own company but also uh, what can we contribute uh, for you in the final product, which is predominantly tires. So starting with the, the internal efforts of, of Allnex regarding sustainability is we have set own goals for our own. So um, here are our targets for our production. We have defined uh, in the past and we will be uh, impact our, uh, our way of working and thinking and produce in the next years. And uh, that will be uh, the, the reduce of non-renewable energy purchases by 15% in the next five years. We also dedicate uh, the most of our uh, resources uh, for product development in our, in our strategic uh, uh, innovation group. Uh, which uh, focus on, on strategic projects in order to make positive impact in the environment. We also uh, produce uh, or will produce uh, more than 40% uh, our production volume under ISO 5001 certification by 2023. For the most products I will um, discuss on, uh, today, we are already meeting uh, the I-5001. Uh, also, we will develop uh, a waste uh, and a water consumption tracking system. We will implement and sustainable product volume management, and uh, we will map sustainable sourcing options for our uh, resins. <clears throat> These uh, we had already uh, done in the past, as I said, so meaning that uh, we got the Ecovartis Gold uh, for 2021 uh, and, uh, and for 2022 we re received even the Ecovartis Platinum, which we are very proud of. So as you can see, we have already taken uh, major efforts uh, to, to regarding sustainability. Just to pick an, uh, an, an example or to highlight one example uh, of our uh, portfolio we are discussing today 
is uh, the production of HM and M, which we are producing uh, globally uh, and uh, also in, in Norway for the EMEA reg region, which is certified ISO 5001 since 2014, which yeah is already some years ago. And, uh, and I also want to highlight that 97% uh, of our energy consumption in Norway uh, comes by hydroelectric power, which is one of the most sustainable energy resources uh, available, uh, which is uh, pretty special comparing with other HMM grades which are uh, in the market. Um, so uh, just because, yeah, the way we uh, consume the energy is pretty unique. <clears throat> so, um, the, the emission standards uh, rise, that's, that's no secret. Uh, and for, for tires, that means um, mostly, so the rolling resistance must fall. So for the European Union, there was set up goals uh, to uh, limit the emission to one, uh, 130 grams per kilometer. And uh, with, uh, yeah, with reducing pretty significantly, uh, significantly the emissions uh, in the next years uh, to uh, 81 and even lower to six, uh, 67 gram per kilometer. And the stricter emissions legislation has massive impact on the demand of the performance tires. So uh, that uh, means that all new design tires have to be 100% uh, uh, low rolling resistance. Uh, and that becomes even more significant, uh, significant uh, for the electric vehicles. Yeah? Although the new vehicles will not emit uh, CO2 by their own, uh, the, um, of course, the, the, they consume also uh, uh, electric energy, which is not always produced um, sustainable. And uh, ro low rolling resistance for a tire, just not uh, for a tire in an electric vehicle, does not um, only means that the car drives more efficiently. For an electric vehicle, it simply means it drives longer, yeah, because the range is extended. <clears throat> Here, come, uh, I want just to highlight uh, that uh, this uh, new. Uh, um, European Green Deal uh, impact everybody uh, um, and uh, for the tire manufacturers uh, many of them or the most uh, biggest players uh, already committed uh, that uh, they have they wanted to be carbon neutral in 2020 uh, in 2050 or even 2040 as well the uh, car producers want to get carbon neutral in 2040 or 2050. Uh, and uh, the, the, the consequence out of that is, is, is pretty clear. If your car itself um, do not drive anymore with, uh, with fuel or and the carbon neutrality is the clear goal, it has a direct impact on the uh, emissions which are caused by the material production. Yeah. So the, the relevance of to become more efficient uh, regarding your um, material production and your material design and your choice of material becomes more relevant in the future than ever before. And here I want just to talk a little bit of the how the materials matter. Yeah? So uh, the future tires must roll better and have to be better recyclable, which are things uh, which is cl clearly the, the focus, I would say, for, for the, the next years or even the next decades. Uh, regarding performance, it means, yeah, so the rolling uh, roll resistance has to be reduced. I already uh, talked about that. Uh, and uh, the, and uh, the durability has to be or will be enhanced. So I simply, so you produce less waste uh, if you produce la uh, your product lasts longer. Uh, if your composition of your material uh, is bio-based uh, or is partially raw materials and, 
uh, feedstocks. Um, it also contributes massively on the uh, sustainability of your um, end product. And last but not least, uh, to uh, increase the recyclability of your materials, uh, which is done uh, pretty successfully for plastics, uh, um, which every drinking bottle is uh, at least partially recycled material. So <clears throat> coming to, to the contribution on Alnex regarding their products for all the the, the topics I in, talked uh, already about. So this is our um, portfolio for tire and rubber applications, so the most significant one. Uh, and de uh, depending on the, on the parts of the tire, we have uh, different products which have different advantages. So just to make uh, a category out of that, so if you're looking for a superior reinforcing uh, of your tire, uh, you should uh, choose the Arnovo PM160 uh, for a, a good uh, cost performance ratio. Uh, the Arnovo PM320 is the right choice. If you're going for uh, adhesion promotion, so superior adhesion promotion, Arnovo PM760 is the right choice. And if you uh, want to achieve also a great uh, adhesion promotion with the additional benefit to eliminate uh, organic cobalt salts out of your compound, uh, Alnovo PN870 is the right choice. So all our products are a 2K system, uh, which, are, uh, which should be used uh, in combination with HMM, which uh, is uh, with which you have basically three grades uh, with the brand uh, Cyrus. And depending on your uh, demands, uh, it can be delivered uh, liquid or in a liquid form or, or a solid material. So uh, then I uh, make a, a breakdown of all the products or part of the um, <clears throat> uh, all the part of the products which are in, in the resin. So as I said, for, for superior reinforcing, uh, the PN160 and 320 are the right choice. So uh, they and so so they are hardening or reinforcing your, your rubber for very hard compounds like the the part which sticks on the rim, um, which is the apex and the bead. And they have uh, they are resourceable free. So all the things which came arise with resource you know, uh, did, did not take into, into place. They enable also uh, the reduction of carbon black, if you wish so. Yeah, so uh, we'd come uh, better with uh, better processability. So, um, so as you are aware, so the, um, the uh, if you use uh, fillers in your rubber system, uh, it already uh, starts to um, Strengthening to interact with the rubber during the mixing, which increases your energy consumption in general, uh, just because your immune viscosity increases. So just by using the resins, you can reduce uh, at least partially the, the carbon black uh, and your immune viscosity will even go down. Uh, so which uh, has a direct impact on processability, energy consumption and mixing times and to have more freedom in general to, to play with uh, raw materials uh, in order to achieve your goals regarding hardness. So um, this is another reinforcing uh, resin, but specifically for the tread compounds, uh, meaning so with compounds with uh, a relatively high SSBR content. Uh, this resin is uh, able to increase the durability uh, of the tire, meaning the wear resistance and the chip and chunk, um, uh, and also in, uh, reduces uh, your heat buildup, so which makes the energy loss uh, uh, better yeah, for you. Um, it works on, on, on TBR, so we have uh, confirmed results for, for TBR and OTR, as well as PC, uh, PCR, very fresh, uh, which come uh, very fresh. 
So uh, like all our resins, I just not want to highlight it too much. So it's also resourceful free and uh, well, increase your durability of your tires. Yeah. <clears throat> now we come to, to the adhesion promotion. Yeah, so uh, we have a, a very established, very successful product, which is the Alma Volt PN 760, uh, which increases the, the adhesion promotion between uh, the, the cord and the rubber, which just because they are, well, the tire is basically a composite, so uh, they, they interact, they do not interact uh, or interact very poorly. Uh, so uh, at, for increase the, the adhesion between two materials, we have uh, this product. It's an alternative for all the resorcinol and resorcinol uh, resins, which are on the market. And uh, just because it's resourceful free, so I would will uh, just say it uh, uh, the last time. It's uh, so uh, resourceful as you may be aware. So uh, it is uh, under evaluation uh, every year uh, because of uh, she regulations, health uh, regulations. It's it's a very pricey product, uh, and uh, it most likely it will be uh, on the SVHC list uh, in, in the near future. So all that problems you will not have with the PN760 just because it does not have any resource in in that. So we do not re uh, use the raw material at all. Uh, the, uh, the suggested use for that is uh, it's not a one to one replacement for resource in all. So therefore uh, you have to make uh, adjustments in your compound. But uh, if you are willing to do so, uh, it will work. Uh, and um, it's, it's simply you have to, to make some uh, compound adaptions. So pretty much the, the, the same story is uh, for the uh, Al Nouveau PN870, uh, which I said is also uh, uh, used for cord adhesion, specifically steel cord. Uh, just uh, because uh, often um, cobalt uh, is used uh, as an adhesion promoter uh, between steel cord and rubber. And with this kind of resin we have designed, uh, you can eliminate uh, your cobalt out of your formulation. Cobalt is also a very critical material regarding supply chain, uh, regarding um, price and uh, um, in general, because uh, cobalt is, uh, yeah, used in uh, electric batteries uh, and with the uprising of the electric vehicles, so the demand is high and therefore the price as well. So uh, just because of that, so with this resin, you have a uh, good alternative um, to elim eliminate cobalt out of your compound. Um, then uh, we have here a very special product, I would say even unique in the market. So it's a processing aid, uh, which you can uh, replace uh, at least partially your mineral oil um, in your compound. Uh, the drawback of mineral oil is just because it's not reactive. It acts purely as a plasticizer with all the upsides and downsides, but it comes uh, into place uh, by using that. And in this case, uh, it's also used in a, uh, as a plasticizer during the, um, during the mixing. Uh, the big advantage, uh, advantage though, is uh, that uh, you get, a, a, just because of its um, reacting resin, during your curing, uh, it reacts uh, and uh, interacts uh, with your compound, so, uh, which has an impact on the hardness. Yeah? So, uh, you have not anymore the pl plasticizing effect um, and uh, you get a superior hardness, um, which has, uh, you get an, another tool to, to play around with your hardness. So you can reduce your carbon black, you can use a reinforcing a resin and you can use that. So you have a, a much more tools in order to meet your, uh, meet your requirements than before. <clears throat> the last product type is here, the, the, is the, the HMM, so as I already said, so all our systems are 2K systems. Uh, and uh, here is the hardener part, uh, which is delivering the methylene uh, donor for our cross-linking interaction. 
the special of our product, as I already said, is the, the way we produce it, which is uh, very sustainable just because of the reason uh, how we get our electric energy. So that's the, the final slide and uh, a summary of what I already said. So we have a different uh, group of resins which have a different benefits uh, depending on your of the part of the tire which uh, are applied. All the what they have all in common there are resources and all free uh, by definition because we do not use the raw material. Uh, the PN870 is additionally uh, so reactive that you can get rid of uh, cobalt in your uh, compound. And uh, by simply using this kind of uh, technology, it comes with an uh, energy reduction during the production. Um, and I think uh, that's it for now. Um, have a lot more to tell, as you may imagine. So, but uh, I'm very happy to answer your questions. Yeah, uh, and so thank you for presenting, Roberto. There are some questions in the Q and A uh, chat, and let me start with the first one. Um, just a second. Will tires also incorporate off-spec or recycled tires into newly manufactured tires to help reduce the carbon footprint? Uh, so um, we are not a tire producer. Yeah. So we are a resin producer. By my prediction is yes. Uh, in, in in future, uh, uh, there will be. Um, tires which will be recycled partially and uh, over the years the 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 portion will increase definitely thank you for answering this roberto and we go to the next uh, what alnex can offer to the tire industry or how alnex grasps the opportunities uh, as sustainability drives the industry forward yeah so <clears throat> Uh, we have uh, in the past always uh, tried to, to, uh, um, to offer alternatives to established solutions. Uh, and of course, we are, um, we think that our solutions are superior regarding one or the other properties. So for example, the PN760 is the alternative to get out of uh, resourcenol. So it has a safety uh, advantage and it has a for sure, uh, for sure, uh, a price advantage, the same as for cobalt with the PN870. And soon uh, we will introduce uh, other resins which has uh, a high uh, bio content in, in their resin structure. And that will be our focus uh, in innovation wise, so that we will um, uh, deliver products, offer products which uh, are within our own set goals, sustainable goals. Thank you, Roberto, for answering this question. And the next one, how can our um, customer order a sample? Oh, yeah, so uh, as usually, so via our customer service, um, uh, you also are very, uh, you can direct contact me, of course, uh, especially for the Envil PN870, which uh, we are very happy to sample, uh, but just on the NDA at the moment, at least. Thank you for uh, answering this question. And we go to the next. What is the recommended amount of your products in a tire? Well, that depends uh, massively uh, on the on the compound you want to use. Uh, uh, so uh, for a Tijan purpose, we usually recommend uh, between 1.5 and 4 PHR of the Alnoble grade and the one to one ratio of the HMM. We know by experience, it depends massively on, on the type of tire and the type of compound. Uh, and the same applies to uh, for the other resins in the other parts of the tire. I think the best would be a technical discussion directly uh, with me, so we can go into the detail. Thank you for answering this one. And there is another question just came in the chat. Al novels are using different phenol derivatives. What about the footprint of these raw materials? Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, and 
so uh, your phenol source can be very uh, different. So uh, the typical or the traditional one uh, is uh, to get a phenol out of a, um, a refinery. So just basic from a um, mineral oil destillate. Um, but um, there is different approaches where you can uh, partially recycle uh, mineral-based products like plastics and uh, to crack it down into uh, their parts and mix uh, the, the parts uh, back into uh, phenol. That is, I think, uh, uh, maybe you heard the, um, the talk uh, about the mass balance approach. So that, that's how it works. So a mixture of basically recycled raw materials, which got into phenol and traditional phenol. And we go to the next question. How will durability or enhanced trade wear of tires be managed by Alnex? Will biofit stocks or recycled materials be part of the strategy for sustainability and lower carbon footprint? Yes, so we have uh, already some efforts uh, regarding uh, to, to get uh, bio-based feedstocks. Yeah? Um, and uh, so it's clearly one of our goals for the future and uh, we are working on that. And uh, in, as I said, uh, in, in the near future, we will have uh, a resin. So meaning in the near future, really in the next few months with a high bio content. Yeah? So based off uh, Re renewable raw materials. Thank you, Roberto. And we move to the next question. Uh, on slide seven of your presentation, uh, our audience could see the percentage of emissions uh, of vehicles now and that uh, of the future. Uh, can you provide absolute numbers? Is that possible? No, I cannot. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so. Uh, uh, what I can uh, discuss, of course, is the uh, the goals which are uh, set, uh, and um, and um, a tire itself is a complex system. Yeah, as you can see, it's a multi-layer system, so it's pretty complex by itself, and they play uh, different roles, uh, and, it, and it's just one part of the complete um, problem, I would say. It's of course also the car uh, and the driver and so on and so forth. So to, to provide absolute numbers is, uh, I would say, even impossible, yeah. unfortunately. Thank you, Roberto. And we have the very last question for this session uh, that refers to the slide uh, of your presentation uh, showing Norway and hydroelectric power plants. So the question is following, is there a calculation on how much on average, tire is reducing the CO2 footprint, knowing that the Cyrus grades are produced in uh, our Lillestrom plant. Can you comment uh, on that, please? Yes. So I, we have never made a breakdown, uh, to be honest, uh, to that. What we have done is to uh, make a comparison. Uh, what, uh, what, how high is the impact? if you would um, produce HMMN, so the Cyrus, traditionally, so with a conventional electric source or with a hydroelectric source, which we have right now. So that is what we can provide. Thank you. Well, uh, with that, we, uh, we covered it all. Thank you very much, Roberto, for answering the question for um, taking your time for joining us today and everyone thank you very much for your questions see you in the next session see bye you. roberta bye thanks everybody